By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at a pretty cool old school magic match. I'm playing against Frank and he's bringing a deck to the table called Another Trick in the Wall. It's green and it's white and it's got a lot of walls. It's really, it's a beautiful deck. I've got a beautiful deck photo and I'm playing against him with my Timmy's Spellbook deck. So that is Mono Blue. Now, before we go to the deck decks, I would just like to point out that as always, you can skip that part as well. You can do that by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of them reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the games. And for here, we are going to start with the deck deck. And I'm first going to look at my own deck, Timmy's Spellbook. And here we see my deck, Timmy's Spellbook. Now I've uh, played this deck so often. It's really uh, my pet deck together with, I guess, my, um, my Tron deck. Those are the, my two favorite decks to play, but I play all sorts of cards, as you probably know when you follow this channel. So I'm just gonna keep it a little bit brief with the deck deck on this deck, because I've it's been on the channel so often. Um, what you see is basically blue and what blue is known for blue. The power of it is really the versatility that it has in old school magic because you've got direct damage with Psyblast and with my four protocol sorcerers, my four Tims. And that's something that you probably wouldn't expect in a blue deck, right? But in old school, you have access to that. Um, you also, of course, have counter magic. That is something that blue still has today. Four counter spells and a mana drain in here. And then you also have the ability, ability to steal stuff with two control magics in the main board, two in the sideboard, and two steel artifacts in the sideboard as well. So I can start stealing. And another thing that I can do that blue does really well, I can start copying stuff and I can control the board. So I've got two copy artifacts and I've got a clone. So I can copy creatures, I can copy artifacts, and I'm also playing with three icy manipulators to make my control package even more complete. Now, this is really more a mid-range deck, I would say, than a control deck, I guess, control mid-range is the proper term for it because I'm also playing with quite a lot of creatures. I love to play with creatures and I do understand that, you know, the more competitive the scene uh, gets, the less creatures you usually see in decks, but I just love to play with creatures. I love to play with Papa Modi. They're a beautiful beta copy. It gives me so much joy when I cast it. I just don't want to stop doing that. I'm also playing with two air elementals. They're just stunning. I'm playing with two ghost ships. I'm playing with a pirate ship just because it's so badass. The worst thing actually that, that has happened to me is when they play a tsunami and I lose all my islands and my pirate ship sinks. I mean, that really kind of breaks my heart when that happens, but okay, uh, the pirate ship is of course in this deck as well. And the nice thing is because I'm playing with so many creatures and with control magics and with icy manipulators, I'm not really worried about creature threats unless they go really quickly. Like for example, um, a turn one hypnotic specter can really be kind of deadly for this deck. So the start of the game, I'm the most vulnerable, but as the game progresses, this deck becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. So usually what I try to do is try to survive the first two, three, four turns, and then slowly start playing out spells, stealing stuff, kind of being a blue player, right? And uh, the blue power, by the way, in this deck really helps as well, just to get you back from behind or to, um, when it's, things are not going fast enough to kind of go faster. So Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, but also Brain Geyser are really important in this deck. And also, of course, the Mox Sapphire, if I can draw it early game. You know, the later you draw the Mox Sapphire, the less valuable it gets. Um, okay, this is the deck. Like I said, I'm gonna keep it short. Um, there's also a Disco Boat strategy in the sideboard, by the way, uh, but I'm sure you figured it out by yourself. Um, I've got a lot of games with Timmy Spellbook, so if you wanna know more about this deck, have a browse through the channel, through the Timmy Talks channel, and you can see a lot of matches where I'm playing this deck, including a playlist where I play it in an Odal, uh, in an Odal monthly competition. That's really been a lot of fun, actually. So this is my deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent, Frank. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Frank, and this is called Another Trick in the Wall. How cool is this deck? And uh, when Frank made this, he actually, I think he sent me a message or I saw him at a tournament. It's been a while back. And he told me, I saw your deck on Timmy Talks and I was just inspired to also make a white and green wall deck. So that's super cool. And he said, you know, I wanted to see how far I could take it. How good of a wall deck could I make kind of using that same strategy? 
with Animate Wall and Sword of the Ages. So for the people that don't know that deck, um, basically what Frank wants to do and what I want to do, wanted to do in that deck as well, is, you know, you play your walls out, like your Carnivorous Plant and your uh, a Wall of Swords, which are really good, beefy walls. You play an Animate Wall on it and then you attack, right? Makes sense. And then after combat, after you've dealt damage and you've got enough walls, you're going to sack them to your Sword of the Ages and you're going to kill your opponent. So Sword of the Ages is a card that you're maybe not so familiar with. You don't see it that often in deck lists. It's an artifact from Legends. It's six to cast. It comes into play tapped. And uh, when you untap it, you can tap and sack an X amount of creatures you control. Uh, and then you can deal damage equal to their power to any target. So that means, let's say for the sake of argument, you're attacking with a carnivorous plant because you've played an animate wall on there. So it's a four or five, right? You're attacking with it. Then you play a berserk on it. It doubles its power. It becomes an eight five trampler. You can deal eight damage with your carnivorous plant. And this is something that people forget sometimes about berserk. It doesn't destroy the creature at the end of combat. No, it destroys the creature at the end of turn if it attacked, right? So Berserk is a very interesting card. So you have your second main phase, you have your whole rest of your turn to sack your Carnivorous Plant to your Sword of the Ages, and then you can deal eight damage again. So possibly you can deal 16 damage with one wall. It's unlikely, but if you pull it off, I mean, you're kind of a legend, right? Talking about Berserks, there are four Berserks in this deck. Another cool thing about Berserk is you don't even have to attack with the creature. It doubles its power. If it attacks, attacked, it is destroyed at the end of turn. But it doesn't have to attack. It doesn't even have to be an attacking creature. So Berserk can also be used to double the power of your creature, make it even bigger with another Berserk and another Berserk, and then sack it to sort of the ages and boom, kill your opponent with, with one wall. It is possible in this deck. And I really, really like looking at this deck and seeing what Frank did with it. Now, I do think one of the weaker parts of this deck is the fact that he's only playing with eight walls because he really needs a wall to, you know, to really make it work and to do what he wants to do. Luckily, he's playing with green. That means he has access to Sylvan Library. So he's playing with two Sylvan Library. He's also playing with land tax. So those cards will really help him kind of sift through his deck and trying to take lands out, trying to find those walls, get those walls on the table. Another thing I really like here is that he's playing with two Diamond Valleys. Diamond Valley goes so well with walls. Diamond Valley, of course, the land from Arabian Nights, tap and sack a creature, gain life equal to its toughness. So that is really sweet. He's also playing with two Maze of If and a beautiful card in the right bottom corner that I just have to mention here, Righteousness. Righteousness, one white, plus seven, plus seven instant. How good is that? But of course, there's a catch. You can only play it on a blocking creature. How good would this card be if you could just play it on whatever, whenever you wanted to? You know, that would be insane. But still, if Frank kills me by playing a Righteousness on, let's say, his Wall of Swords, killing one of my creatures in the process, then second the Wall of Swords to a sword and dealing 10 lethal damage to me, I would actually be happy to die to that. I would, Frank, I would appreciate it. I'm not going to whine. I'm just going to say, man, I'm going to get you a beer because I like that kind of magic. Uh, looking at the rest of the deck, we just see a very solid and strong build. What I also like about this deck is that he's not playing Swords to Plowsier's main. He's putting four in the sideboard. That makes absolute sense. He, he already has two Maze of If and eight walls on blocking duty. Why would he put in more, more removal? It just makes no sense. And if he plays against a creature-heavy deck, maybe against my deck because I've got some creatures, you know, he can always pop those four swords in after sideboarding. Um, so yeah, oh, and also we've got the Avoid Fates in, this, uh, in the sideboard, which I think is good as well because sometimes when you invest so much in, in one card, right, we're talking about putting Animate Wall on, on a creature, right, on a wall. We're talking about playing Berserk on that wall. We're talking about sacking that wall to the Sword of the Ages. If anywhere in the process, you know, it's, it's very dangerous. If anywhere in the process your opponent manages to play a swords on your wall or find some other way to destroy it, then you're done, right? You're putting all your marbles in one bag, basically. So avoid faves or a good inclusion. Maybe I would have played one or two main. On the other hand, not every deck has spot removal. So, and actually the blue deck that he's playing against today doesn't have any. So it's it's a good choice to put it in the sideboard, I guess. But I'm really, really liking this deck and I'm looking forward to see the match and, and wonder how this is going to end up. I'm, I'm almost rooting for you, Frank, because I think this deck is so cool. 
So this is the deck of Frank. Let me know in the comments what you think of it and um, what does your perfect wall deck look like? Let me know in the comments below. And now we are gonna go to the games. Game number one and here we go. Frank on the play, starting with a Mox Emerald and a Plains. Look at that Sylvan Library turn one, very quick start. I believe I've taken a Mulligan by the way. So I'm now drawing into card number seven. Playing a basic island passing turn. So this is that early game stage that I'm always a little bit worried about. My deck's not the quickest. There we see Frank taking up the top three cards and choosing which one he wants to draw because of that Sylvan. He can also decide to uh, cash in for life to draw an extra card, playing a Sol Ring here for one white. It seems keeping green open. Playing another Plains, there is Carnivorous Plant. Four, five, Wall from the Dark. One of the best walls in old school magic. You get a lot of bang for your buck, but of course a lot of people prefer the Urnum Gin, which is a four or five as well, but you can attack with it. And I'm playing out a Mishra's Factory. That's not a good sign because that means I don't have a second blue in hand. So maybe I've got some mana issues as well. Remember, I did take a Mulligan. So he started with six. Let's hope for me that I get to draw into some cards. Look at that. Drawing two extra cards, strip mining my Mishra's Factory. His life total goes down to 12. Very interesting. I'm also playing a strip mine. Probably not going to use it though, because I really need that mana. And I'm really giving Frank the space. And if he can find an animate wall now, he can start bashing into me. Impossible for me to counter with only one blue source in this deck. There is a beautiful wall of sorts. Good news for me is that he still hasn't found a way to attack me. There is a maze of if. And there is a city in a bottle. And you can see Frank going for his cards. Like, okay, that's fine. I think city in a bottle, this is one of those moments where, you know, city is not that useful. And there is a Mishra's Factory by Frank. And, you, and I mean, you know that when you play it. And, and now that I'm saying it's not that, you, that useful, Frank is, of course, playing uh, with Diamond Valley. And he cannot cast that anymore. Finally, I found my second blue passing turn here. I do have the mana now to play out a Timmy. There's another Mishra's Factory. So next turn, he can swing with two creatures trying to deal some damage. And of course, a Factory I cannot counter. So it's always a hard card to deal with for my deck Timmy Spellbook. One of the main reasons that I play with Mishra's Factories myself as well. I believe I'm just passing turn here doing nothing. And I'm really giving um, Frank all the space he needs but he seems to be pretty stuck as well. Look at that, I'm discarding a card, another city in a bottle. And uh, this is really bad for me. And I guess this is the one of the only decks that will give you this much time. Tapping two from the Soul Ring, probably yeah, animating both factories, sending one back, pumping it, the one that I'm sending back with the mace. That means three damage for me, going down to 17. And tapping four, what am I gonna play? Ghost Ship perhaps? Or, okay, Icy Manipulator, of course, that's another option. Quick Disenchant here by Frank, of course. Uh, you know, he's, he's playing with the whites, so he's got the answers. Disenchant, such an incredibly good card. Maybe one of the best cards in old school. I mean, for old school, it's really unique to have an instant speed, one white and one, and have an option. You can choose, you can take care of an enchantment or an artifact that's really unique in old school. Sending back the factory, taking three again, dropping to 14. So finally, I'm going down in life and playing another icy. Problem, of course, is I have to tap out completely. I don't have enough mana to end play it and use it. And it's really not an ideal situation. Look at that beautiful, beautiful Black Lotus. And I'm expecting him to attack again with his forces. That means another three points of damage going down to 11. Nine damage already taken. Oh, oh look at this! Boom, 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 and done. So basically what he's doing, it's three. He's making it a 6-3, a 12-3, and then even a 24, whatever. I'm dead. Beautiful finish here um, by Frank. Well, well, well done. And uh, we're going to dive into our sideboards, and we're going to go to game number two. Game number two, and look at that. It looks like I'm taking a mulligan again. Did you see that? Anyway, I'm on the, on the play. At least uh, I've got a pretty good start here with the turn one Sol Ring. It would have been nice if I had a Mox Sapphire and a Timmy. 
That's kind of my dream opener. And there's also a soaring from Frank in a Savannah. Second blue source. So this is good news for me. At least I have counter capability online. There is a forest and he's got four mana. Is he going to play a, a wall of swords or a carnivorous plant? He's not doing it. Look at that. Trying to find some cards with the brainstorm and playing out a library of Alexandria. This is really good news for me. If the library can stick, there is the carnivorous plant and an animate wall on there. Ooh, this is a problem. Hopefully I can find like a maze of it. Ancestral recall. Okay, I'm, I'm really getting some powerful cards, but is it enough? If I can cast, okay, draw an extra card with the library. I wanted to say if I can find um, an icy manipulator, for example, that would be great. I now have eight cards in hand after activating that library of Alexandria. And I'm trying to decide what to do. Uh, my back is against the wall. Looking at that uh, animated carnivorous plant that's probably going to attack me next turn. I need to do something. And I'm also one game behind. You know, remember Frank won that first game with that impressive triple berserk play. Discarding an island here, passing turn. And there is a Diamond Valley. Let's just hope he doesn't have a Berserk. Let's see what he's going to do. And okay, there's a Fortified Area. That gives all these walls plus one plus oh. That means I'm taking five damage. Going to drop to 15 here. And wow, this is, this is difficult. A 5-5 five, five Carnivorous Plant is... Kind of eating me alive here. Tapping four. Okay, and this is pretty good playing an icy manipulator. That's kind of what I hoped for. I'm playing with three icy manipulators main board, so I am usually able to find one. And look at that, I'm not using my library, probably because I want to use that mana to tap down the carnivorous plant. And exactly, and then keep my counter capability open. You have to understand I'm with my back against the wall. I don't want to have Another attack. I want to keep my counter magic open, it seems. And now I believe I'm back to seven using the library, going to eight in hand. Eventually, the library should grant me the victory. There is a prodigal sorcerer. There is the Tim. And I don't believe that Frank's playing with any land removal. So that's good news for me that uh, Library of Alexandria is here to stay. Tapping down, of course, the plant. It is beautiful to see one of those uh, beta, I believe, animate walls. It's just incredibly cool card, cartoony, goofy art that I really appreciate. And just really beautiful to look at his, I want to say black border deck, but I see the Savannah is an unlimited. And let's see what Frank's going to do. We're going through his cards. Seems to be a little bit in the tank. I mean, it was looking good for him. But then, you know, I just drew into that Library of Alexandria. Pinging him for one year, going to 19. There seemed to be a little glitch in the video, but nothing seems to be lost. Playing another Timmy, another Protocol Sorcerer, drawing extra cards. Yeah, this should probably be game. I'm going to start pinging him now. And if you're Frank, you're thinking, I kind of need a miracle here. Look at that. I'm choosing to discard another card. I want to keep my counter magic open. I'm really playing that control game now. I know I've got card advantage. I know I've got that icy. And I just slowly want to start pinging and control the match. This is what uh, you want to do as a blue mage. And of course he can sack his wall to the Diamond Valley if he has to. He doesn't have to right now. He's still on a really healthy life total. I believe it's hard to see that uh, dice number four there. But I believe he's on 18 right now. I've pinged him twice. What am I going to do? Am I going to draw another card with the library? I'm not doing that. Playing a clone. Okay, I'm cloning my Timmy's, which is kind of nice. And I'm probably going to tap down the wall again, and then I'm going to ping him for two at the end step. So that would mean he goes to 16, if I'm not mistaken. He has to start doing something against the Tims. There is a wall of sorts. But of course, for the Timmy's, the walls don't matter. So from that perspective, this is a bad matchup for Frank. But if he can find another animate wall, remember the wall of swords is a 4-5 because of that fortified area. And also his walls have banding. There is another animate wall. Am I going to counter this? Yeah, there is a counter spell. 
Interesting, right? So I'm choosing not to counter the Wall of Swords. Oh, he's gonna eat it. Oh, he's gonna go back up again. So I'm dealing two, but he's gaining five, so he's gaining three. I think he's on 21. Oh, look at that, a balance. Wow, that is a good move. With that balance, I'm losing two Timmies. I'm losing, am I losing lands? But I'm also losing cards, meaning my library is now inactive. This is a really good play. Uh, and if now Frank can find like a disenchant for the Icy Manipulator, he's completely back into the game. And this is something that you have to love and why balance is such a powerful card. It can get you back from behind, right? Not too long ago, I think a couple of minutes ago, I told you this, this match is pretty much over, right? With the active Loa as a blue player. And now look at this. I'm choosing to counter the animate wall. Well played by Frank, by the way. And, uh, and, and you know, that's how I got into trouble. I had a control magic in hand, it seemed, by the way, because I was discarding it. So this was just a bad move. I should have kept the counter spell in hand. So that was a little mistake on my part. Luckily for me, I'm finding another Icy. And I still can ping him for one. But that's going to take a long, long time. That is not the best strategy for me now. Just a, a, a Mamo to Jin or an Air Elemental would just be perfect. Pointing out that, that Tim, yeah, but it's only going to ping for one. It's not that bad. Playing out another plant, another 4-5, that's now a 5-5 five, five because of the fortified tapping both walls, pinging him for one. Let's see what I can do. Okay, of course, now I'm animating the factory, attacking with the factory, I've got more than enough mana, so now I can start dealing some more damage, putting some more pressure on Frank here. Oh man, but playing that counter spell on the animate wall, what a mistake. And uh, it's just so interesting, like I've I've recorded myself so often now and still still I, I, can, I find myself making mistakes. Attacking here for two. And let's see what else. There it is. Stealing. Oh, of course, he's eating it with Diamond Valley. That makes sense. <laughs> but I played Control Magic, tried to steal his carnivorous plant with the animate wall. And again, more damage for Frank here. He's now down to 15. I'm going to swing in. I think he's going to go to 13 here. And oh, actually, he's still on four dice, so I guess he's on, on 16 or something. It's hard to see the dice number four. And there is a wall of sorts. But remember, I've got double Icy Manipulator. This is really, really tough. Attacking again. Finally, he's low enough that he only needs three dice. He's now on 14. Look at that. Another Mistress Factory. Those Mistress Factories are going to do some work next turn unless he can play out another wall. Let's see what he's going to do here. And there is a Sword of the Ages, but there is a Mana Drain. And okay, he's saying, you know what, this is enough. I'm not going to win this one. Wow, but I really, Frank, I mean, I really, really like that play with the balance. First, Wall of Swords, I'm not doing anything. Then, Counterspell. Uh, I'm sorry, Animate Wall. Then I played Counterspell, and then you played the balance. I think that's that was just... A fantastic move and you you know you almost got back into the race after my you know really insane uh start with that uh, brain geyser and ancestral recall so very well done that means uh, it's a one one now by the way so we're gonna go to game number three game number three here we go oh, another mulligan wow so i mean three games and three mulligans and look at that, a uh, Chaos Orb, turn one by Frank, but a Strip Mine on my part, taking care of the duel, is just playing another Savannah again, playing an Island Passing turn here. And uh, what is he going to do? Is he going to flip on my Island? I mean, I do think it's worth considering. That's exactly what he's going to do. And there is the hit, Island is gone. And luckily for me, I do have some more land, it seems. There's the plant, carnivorous plant, diamond valley, passing turn, second blue, so I've got counter magic open. I was a little bit concerned when he took care. Ooh, animate, wall, no counter spell on my part, dropping to 16. When I wanted to say, okay, maze of if, that's good. I wanted to say I was a little bit worried when he took uh, care of that other land with the chaos orb. So two diamond valleys in play and another plant. Let's see what I can do here. So I've got the mace to send back the animate wall and the other one cannot attack. And it's my go, another island. And tapping three, there is Timmy. 
But I am now signaling to Frank that I have now counter magic and there's another animate wall. <laughs> Look at my life total. Taking four here. Am I actually? I'm, I think I'm, yeah. Going to 12. Okay, Frank was probably saying, give me a moment. But I'm on 12 now. Taking a double hit from the plant. Maybe I have to chump next turn. Okay, control magic. And of course, he's going to eat it. Again, I'm trying to get it. But I mean, I have to say those diamond valleys, they work really well against my control magics. That is something I didn't think about during the deck deck section. But it's really helpful. Oh, man. He's taken back the orb with the regrowth earlier. And now he's flipping. Pinging and blocking, chump blocking. I'm on 12 here. It's 1-1. One, one. Is he actually going to beat me with the wall deck? That would be pretty epic. Playing an icy manipulator. There is uh, another maze, but now from Frank's side, at least I've got the icy. It's thin, but at least uh, it's going to save me for now. There is a ghost ship, which is also a great blocker because for three blue, I can regenerate. Tapping down the wall, attacking here, sending it back with the maze, playing another Timmy. And it looks like Frank's just top decking at the moment, finding a forest, putting it on the table. And uh, looks like I am now going to ping. What can I do? More islands attacking, sending it back and passing turn. Frank top decking here and there's another plant. Pinging him for one, of course, that's the pinging game. Tapping down his wall. Playing another island and passing turn. Tapping down the wall again, another animate wall. This is pretty sweet, he can now attack, but I've got the ghost ship and I can regenerate, I've got enough mana. So that's pretty good news for me. The bad news is, I mean, pinging him down is gonna take me 17 more turns and that is a pretty risky strategy. And now he's attacking, and remember, he's got Berserks in his deck. So if you can play a Berserk on the Carnivorous Plant, it gets trampled, and it can trample over my Ghost Ship. There is a Brain Geyser. Look at that, keeping three blue open to regenerate my Ghost Ship. And it looks like I'm even thinking about keeping that one. I just think three mana is enough, but of course I'm thinking about my... Actually, I need to keep four open, because I'm thinking about my, um, my Icy Manipulator. That's kind of take up a land as well. Does that mean that I'm gonna sacrifice perhaps my Timmy here on this assault? Tapping one down, attacking here. Oh, chump blocking with the ghost ship. Interesting, I'm not sure if this is a good decision. I mean, if you decide not to keep mana open to regenerate, then why not spend the extra two mana on two more cards with the Brain Geyser? So I think this is a mistake on my part. If I want to chump block anyway, you know, why not just do it? Why keep three mana open instead of just one for the icy? That's quite interesting. Playing another Mistress Factory. I need something to stop that second plan, though. Okay, copy artifact. This will work. This will work. And remember, uh, the hand of Frank is empty. And now we can start fishing, though, with the Sylvan Library. Probably trying to find disenchants to take care of those icy manipulators. Let's see what he can do. Playing another maze. And I believe he drew an extra card, by the way, taking four damage and dealing an extra damage to him as well. He's still on plenty of life. And what can I do? Finding another Mishra's factory and playing out a ghost ship again. And passing turn. Hopefully I'm not going to make any more mistakes. I really have to play tight. Remember, he also has Sword of the Ages in hand. If he draws, I mean in hand, but in his deck. If he draws into a Sword of the Ages, he already has 11 power on the board with that Wall of Swords and those double plants. So, I mean, he can hurt me for 11 if he draws into a Sword. Look at that. He takes another extra card going down to 11. I'm pinging him to 6. He's pretty desperate. He knows he's behind. He knows he needs something. Wow, four Mistress Factories on the board on my side. Oh, yeah, showing him my side blast. Nothing he can do. Ooh, hoo, hoo. But he was close, though. When it was on 12, man, Frank, I was sweating. Thank you for bringing this beautiful, beautiful deck to the table. It's really inspiring to see what you've done uh, with the wall deck. Here we can see your deck list again. And, uh, yeah, really, really cool, man. And 
I really love it when people use the best cards in the game to try to make a card like Animate Wall work. I think that's just fantastic. Uh, let me know in the comments below, uh, like I asked for during the deck tech section as well, what would your best wall deck be? What colors would you play? Would you, for example, add red? Red's got some pretty good cards. Would you maybe go white, uh, blue and red? That could also be an option. Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Frank, thank you very much for playing. And this was another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Now, if you want to support the channel, I would like to ask you to like this video, to leave a comment, sharing this on your socials if you like what you see, and also to become a sub if you're not a subscriber yet. All that helps and makes the channel bigger and better and shows YouTube that old school magic does matter. Another thing you can do is you can become a patron of the channel and that already starts with $1 a month. It's really simple to join. There's a link popping up right now that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and there you can see what you can do to support Timmy Talks financially as well. And the cool thing is if you join us on Patreon, um, you can join our Discord, you can join our Timmy Talks tournaments, um, and there's just a little nice little community that we have so far with uh, more than a hundred patrons at the moment. So it would really be cool if you would consider joining us and helping the channel move forward. Another nice bonus is that if you join the, uh, the Timmy Talks Patreon, your name will, um, will get a place in the end scroll. And talking about the end scroll, let's go there and let's take a look at all the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ich kann das Fink, das Sommer gesehen.